Alright, welcome to a new series we're starting, which we're going to call Symbolic Logic, right? Now, let me ha let me do this brief preface introduction before we get into any content. I just want to talk about what we're going to kind of learn and how these videos are going to be structured. So logic, that is the study of valid inference. And a valid inference is one in which if the premises are true, that the conclusion must be true. Now, logic is a very in-depth topic. It's the intersection among linguistics, philosophy, and math. So there's a lot to dig in there. And I personally can't do that all. I can't tell you all the philosophy behind the stuff. I can't tell you all the linguistic problems that might emerge from how we translate sentences and kind of lose meaning as we go from statements to symbols. I can't do all that. So think of these videos as a supplement to a logic class. So you're taking a course in logic, but maybe you forgot how to do something or you didn't really understand anything. That's what I'm here for, to help reinforce the things you would learn in a class. And everything I'm going to go over is based on the symbol what I learned in the symbolic logic class that I took at my college. So there's your brief little introduction. This is a super cool topic, so please stay with me. So the first thing we're going to do is talk about how we can go from translating statements into symbols. We want a symbolic representation of statements. And we have two kinds of statements here. We have simple statements and compound statements. Now what's written in blue, right? What's written in blue, these are all these are all simple statements. Simple statements. And I've included some examples as you can see. Um, elephants are friendly animals. It's a simple statement. Johnny likes math. Stitch is my favorite Disney character. We've just got one subject. This is, these are simple statements. Below them in yellow, so like right here, these are all compound statements. So we kind of join two simple statements together, or maybe there's just a little bit more to be said about a simple statement. It is not true that animals are friendly. So that's an example of like a negation of a simple statement. Animals are friendly is the simple statement. It is not true that negates the simple statement. You want to like this video and your friend wants to sub subscribe. So there's some subliminal messaging. As you can see, that's a conjunction of two simple statements. Either I will play football or I will play soccer. Maybe where you come from, those words are interchangeable. I didn't honestly think about that before I wrote that out. Anyway, as you can see, we have simple statement or simple statement. Next, if I'm hungry, then I will eat. We have a conditional statement. I will play games if and only if I am bored. Now we have a biconditional statement. You can kind of see how these compound statements are different from the simple statements. And so we're talking about symbolic representations of statements. Now with our simple statements, it's actually super easy. What we do is we take a statement like elements are friendly and replace that with one letter. Now this letter can be chosen kind of arbitrarily, if you're doing a homework problem or a test or a quiz in a logic class, odds are your professor is going to tell you what letter they would like for the simple statements. So some examples for this, elements are, elephants are friendly animals, right? I would just replace that with the letter E. E means elements are friendly animals. Now for Johnny likes math, I might just say J. That would be my symbolic representation of that statement. Likewise, Stitch is my favorite character, Disney character, right? That'll just be S. Now, what about for the compound statements? There's a difference between simple and compound statements, so it must be the case that compound statements are a little bit more complex. Well, if we look at our simple statements that are hidden within our compound statements, right? It is not true that animals are friendly. Animals are friendly is the simple part, right? So we would just probably say A for that. So I'll just write out, it is not true that A. You want to like this video and your friend wants to subscribe. Now for this one, I think you want to like this video can be a capital Y. Oh, and that's important to note also. When we are when we have a symbolic representation of a statement, we're gonna always use capital letters. So I might say capital Y for that, and your friend wants to subscribe, a friend, so I might say capital F. So that entire statement I would translate to capital Y, and capital F. Either I will play football or I will play soccer. I'll do F or S for that. If I'm hungry, then I will eat. 
if h, then e. I will play games if and only if I am bored. P, if and only if B, right? I'll play if and only if I'm bored. Now, we don't want all this, right? We don't want, it is not true that. We don't want and, we don't want or, we don't want if then, and we don't want if and only if. We don't want words, we just want symbols. We want to take our language and move it to simple symbols. So how can we do that? We actually have five logical operators that will replace all types of sentences like that. It is not true that. It is false. And, or, if, then, if, and only if. So let's talk about those five logical operators. I have a table. So we're going to talk about the operators. I'm going to give you their names, their function, and then some English translations of those operators. So the first one is the tilde. So the tilde is just a little squiggly line like that. Tilde is spelled like that, T-I-L-D-E. And what is its logical function? The logical function of a tilde is negation, right? And so some English translations for which we would use the tilde would be maybe not, it is not the case, right? Anytime we are negating a simple statement, we want to use the tilde. So let's look back at our negation earlier, right? It is not true that A, this can just become, this can just become tilde A, not A. All right, let's look at our next operator. Our next operator is going to be the dot. It's just a dot. What is this for? This is for conjunction. That it is, that is its logical function, conjunction. When we conjoin two simple statements, right? So this can be seen in English as and, also, but, could be, um, nah, yeah, and also, but these are loose translations, by the way. I'm not using all of them. That's the difficult thing. That's what can be difficult about this course is there's no one equation fits all. There's really some, you have to imply some stuff on your own. And that I think is where people can kind of struggle, but you can overcome that struggle through practice. So now let's see where this operator fits in our conjoined simple statements above. Y and F. This just becomes y dot f. It's exactly what we want to reach. All right, what's the next thing we're going to do? The next operator is our wedge. And what is its logical function? A disjunction. And so we use this when we want to translate stuff like or and unless. So I have a peer, f or s. That will just become f wedge s kind of looks like a v right i mean it looks exactly like a v but it's not it's a wedge all right now we've got two more we got two more don't clock out on me we have the horseshoe the horseshoe it kind of looks like a greater than sign it's not it's supposed to it's supposed to have a curve to it horseshoe what is its logical function implication so we use these for statements of the form if blah 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 then blah 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 we can also use it when we're saying only if so implication if i have this that implies that so we use these for if then translations so right here i have if h then e i will write this as capital h horseshoe e if h then e or h only if e all right, let's look at our last logical operator. The last one is our biconditional, biconditional, and it's three horizontal lines. What is its logical function? It expresses equivalence between statements. And in English, we would see this as an if and only if statement. If and only if. So I have P if and only if B. I'll write that as P conditional b we have that triple bar for b p if and only if b so that's how we would make these compound statements down to just letters on our operators so that's really good we've got that done now let's look at some of these so for our um negated statements right we would just call these negations so for it is not true that a we call this a negation right 
for statements of the form y and f, for example, we call that conjunction. y and f are the conjuncts. f or s, that we would call that a disjunction. f and s are the disjuncts. Now, when we have a conditional statement, an implication, right, we have an antecedent and a consequent. So this right here is a whole conditional statement. H is the antecedent, and E is the consequent. It's good that we have these definitions so we can easily refer to the parts of the statements later on in the series. And then now we have P if and only if B. This is a biconditional statement that expresses material equivalence. So now this is great because we have everything we need to take statements, right, as complex as we want them to be and reduce them to just capital letters and symbols, right? Now we can write some statement of the form, oh, I don't know, um, A and B implies C um, if and only if H. We can, that can be some English statement. I don't know what it is, something really complex. We can reduce statements now to these letters and operators. Now, our focus next time is going to be how to identify the main operator of a statement. And then we'll, I'll show you examples for every single operator for the tilde, the dot, the hedge, the horseshoe, the wedge, the horseshoe, and the biconditional, where they are all the main operator because we need to be able to identify our main operators for what we're going to do later in the series. So that is all for today. If you made it to the end of this video, please consider liking and subscribing as that would help me. But regardless, if you made it to the end of this video, thank you for watching. I really appreciate it and I hope you learned something.